Now before assembly, there's an important step. Um, I'm gonna make sure my jig is square. So this is what I was talking about with uh, squaring up your jig. I found a piece that was off enough to make me want to remove the whole piece, get it nice and square, and then tack it back in. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm using just one of the long tubes. We know that these rails are the reference for flat bottom. And I've got my jig piece clamped to it. I welded on these on the back so it's nice and flush and square with it. I'm going to slide it into place exactly where it should be and that way I know that the floor is going to be perfectly square. It should be in a half an inch gap right in here so I'm going to set that and I'm going to weld it back in and then I can build the floor and I know it's perfectly square. with the hand file on the grinder, um, meticulously making every part fit. This is the one of the primary parts of this. So it needs to be perfectly square, it needs to be fit up well, it needs to be welded well, because everything attaches to this bar. Now you saw me flip it, now when you're using a jig and you have it in the jig like that, the only way to make sure it's square is to flip it. That means the front and back aren't crooked, that means the side to side, are perfectly in line. Uh, you saw me using clamps. I ended up welding these blocks onto the side instead of clamping them for that specific reason. Um, I'm, a, I'm kind of a methodical guy and that's kind of what it takes to build these is that it, it's not a snap tight kit. It is a fabrication. So doing the four first, learning how to make things square along with meticulously fitting joints, not only gives you a good base to work from, but it also sets the tone and the standard for the rest of the pieces and how they're gonna go on. All right, the next piece is the main roll bar or main hoop. And uh, I purposely underbent this piece um, because this is a hard one, there's four bends, and if you don't nail the bends, then the whole thing is off, even if one bend is a degree off, it's not gonna line up correctly. So I underbent two of the pieces by one degree to show you how to align parts to make them work, all right? So you can see, when I put this on, it's about an inch, to an inch and a half off of either side. So if you're one to two degrees off, it can affect it at the bottom. So you gotta come up with ways to make it fit correctly onto what you're building. And I'll show you that. All right, so I've got this in place. I've got the, uh, the strap on, but I haven't tightened anything yet. Uh, this is very close to center. And as you can see, this side is lined up. So what I'm gonna do, since it's sitting flush in the jig and sitting flush with the rail, I'm gonna take a measurement and measure this, match up the other side, crank this together, and tack everything up. Alright, 
It's all squared up. Uh, the connection point to the side rails are equal distant from this front tube, but since this is a jig, you can use any point. Uh, the top is centered. It all took with some cargo straps and a little bit of dedication and a tube that was not bent perfectly is now completely square on the assembly. Alright, next on the list is the uh, front windshield slash hood. I honestly have no idea what to name this, so that's the name it got. Uh, this was assembled in the previous previous one, and it just sits in there, gets centered up. Boom. All right, next up are the eight pillars. Now the way this goes in is this stays level, this stays centered, this stays centered. Uh, this joint goes right at the apex of this turn. So where this sits is where it gets tacked. And then you match the other side, check your cross members, everything is just getting tacked. I welded the floor together because it's done. We're not gonna have to disassemble it to change anything. It's completely squared with the jig. But some of the uprights, you tack them in, you build the rest of it, and if you need to adjust something, you pop it loose, adjust it, tack it back in. And then once you have every piece in place all tacked, then you do your final welding on your whole chassis. That's how I like to clean up my edges. I like to put a nice chamfer right on the edge all the way around. That gives a really nice channel for welding. And you've got to clean off all the thin parts. This whole ear right here is just thin metal. If you tried to weld that, it would break off. So when you're doing your trimming, trim it down to at least the width of the wall of the tube and uh, clean off all these burlies, make for a nice clean edge. Now what I ended up doing to get these eight pillars in place, since I don't have anybody here to hold this for me, and I couldn't, my magnets wouldn't work because they would rotate out, is um, the picture shows that it clearly, this point mounts at the center of this bend, right? So that is a solid reference point. You can see the center of a bend. So since I don't have anybody to hold me, I, I lined up the tube right at that point, mid-bend, and I put one small tack on the outside edge so that way I could move the tube around, I could twist it a little bit, I had some maneuverability with it to, to get this level, to get this squared, and to find a common point. As this rotates, these are gonna choose different points on the side rails. So if this is square or centered, this is flat, uh, this is straight and square, these are going to have the same point on the back because it all lines up. Now, something else you can do is use the cross members to align everything. Um, the rear cross member goes just above, if you look at the picture, it goes just above, like at where this pipe or bend starts to go straight towards the roof, and this one sits at the center of the bend. So you put both those in place, you measure the angle of it from the ground, since we're working for a jig, and when that angle matches, it's in the right place. So if those four points line up and the angle is straight, then you've put these pieces in the right place. It's that easy. I designed the chassis that way to make it easier for assembly. If the right is squared to the left and the cross member lines up, then the whole frame stays square. And the order of building uh, reflects using those cross members to help align things. Right, if you look at the diagram and on your master parts list, part C44 is your main floor cross member. So this piece has an exact width between these two floor rails, and since you use the jig to assemble it, this piece will fit here, and since it's a cross member, it should fit snugly. Um, but you can make a second one of these and trim it down a little tight and shorter, 
and use it as a reference. So if you have two points across from each other, you can line it up, you could put a square on it, and if that's square where those two points meet, then the whole assembly is square.